Welcome aboard the TV show live. It is Tuesday night, uh, and it's April 7th. Banner weather here in North Texas. It's about 83 degrees out. Pretty sweet. It is uh, the one or two weeks of spring we get before it goes into summer. So See, if you're ever thinking of... That. We get like a day. We get like... <laughs> One day where it's really nice and we get all excited and then the next thing it's a hundred degrees and then for like two weeks and then it's back to winter again here. That's what we have. If, anyway. if you're ever thinking of visiting North Texas, you want to come in October, uh, sorry, mid-October to mid-November or April. Okay. It's time. Perfect. I'll take uh, it. Of course, Southern Texas will be different. You know, I'm sure they you back it up a month, but either way, it's it's awesome. So my name's Woody Adams. I'm a product specialist with Intuit. Sorry for, for the lack of intro, and thanks for watching the show or listening throughout the week. Uh, you can join us at Pound QB Show Live. That's on Nerf Nerf.com, and just search for Pound QB Show Live. Or I think yeah, I think that's how you do it. Sign in with your Twitter. And uh, yeah, similar to what I'll talk TV about that chat, in just a second. You know. I'll give a little bit more instruction. Oh, I'll cool. Do the sponsors, yeah. and I'll talk about how the <clears throat> works and the contest again. Nice. And then we'll go into questions. And it's just Stacy and I tonight, although I think, but it's possible Don might come in with some friends at this New York app convention. I, I don't really know what's going on in New York City, but anyway, uh, I do work for Intuit, but Intuit is not affiliated with the show. Anything I do or say uh, might not necessarily reflect the opinion, statements, or views of Intuit. So, Stacy, how, how are things going? I, I notice you're wearing a cool uh, shirt. I am. So, thank you, Woody. Um, I'm Stacy Keldahl, and I am wearing our new QBShow.com shirts. Uh, these we bought specifically for... Well, we were going to buy shirts anyway. Well, let me back up. So... <laughs> To, the easiest way to do this to join the chat, you're going to use the hashtag. You can just do it on Twitter, and that's fine. Um, it's a hashtag. It's hashtag. Uh, hang on, I'm going to mute you guys. Um, it's hashtag um, QB Show Live, uh, and you can follow the tweet chat just on Twitter um, all by itself, or uh, you can use Nerf. So you would log into Nerf.com and just use your Twitter login to log in for, to that. And then you're going to search for the hashtag QB Show Live and just join the mm -hmm. chat. And it's a lot easier uh, to kind of pay attention to the conversation. And the reason why we want you to really start engaging in the conversation is for the next 10 weeks or 9 weeks or whatever it is, I think 10 weeks before Scaling New Heights, we have a contest that we're going to do, uh, that we're participating in, and we're doing it in conjunction and with partnership with all of our sponsors. So with... Um, with Fundera, with T-Sheets, with Avalara, with QVinci, and with Skyline Cloud Services, which has uh, historically been Unidata. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pick six people every week uh, mm -hmm. who have been using the QB Show Live hashtag. And we're going to send you a shirt. And it's going to look just like this, this beautiful green shirt, very bright. And when one of us uh, from somebody sees you from either maybe one of somebody from our sponsors or Dawn or Woody or myself, we're going to give you a card and they're all going to be numbered so it's a very limited number of people. We're going to give you a card and whatever uh, sponsor is on the back, there's going to be five different ones, you're going to go to that booth and you're going to get a special uh, prize. So you have to show the card and it has to be one of our numbered cards and you have to be wearing the shirt to get the card. Um, you don't have to be going to Scaling New Heights to win the shirt. Uh, you just have to be at scaling and be seen in the green shirt uh, in order to win a special kind of... And I have no idea what the what the sponsors are going to give away. I told mm. them I don't really care. Uh, they can give away, you know, gift cards to Applebee's for all I care. Um, they're just going to be giving something away. And I see um, two of my favorite people who've just joined in, and I'm going to make them squirm just a little <laughs> bit longer by keeping them muted just because I can. Um, so there's that. Uh, so Dawn and Kelsey from T-Sheets have joined us oh. in. <gasps> oh my gosh, and Dawn's boyfriend Mike Michalowicz is there as well. Um, they've all got beers in their hands, so I'm going to make them be quiet. I know, I'm going to make I'm gonna make them be quiet for, yep, nope, I know. So uh, th we'll bring them on in just a couple seconds. Um, but I really wanted to mention, so make sure that you participate in the tweet chat. Um, 
make sure that you participate in the tweet chat um, and use the mm -hmm. hashtag, and then we'll send you a shirt, and I will get a hold of you. I will contact you via Twitter and say, hey, uh, maybe DM me, direct message me, or email me. Uh, but nice. anyway, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be giving away six shirts uh, every week. So there's that. Sweet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in... Um, yeah, let's bring in the uh, Don and Kelsey. We have real and, questions. So we have a full show. Mike. So they're going to have to... Um, we will bring them in now. Yeah, we're going to bring them yeah. in for a little bit. Roll along with it. I can't... Um, apparently they've muted themselves. So oh. you guys are SOL. I did what I could. Here, I think I can unmute. There, there we go. go. Uh, so Don and... Um, Kelsey from T Sheets, and we have Mike McCallowitz who's there. I see him as well. Um, I'm right here. Can I, I know. Yeah, I'm excited. A little sip of beer. Here I'm we go. Beer, but thanks. Appreciate no. it. <laughs> uh, so you guys are all in New York for the CEO roundtable. Is that correct? Oh, and I know Dawn's not. Dawn, you're just there just to be there. Um, but uh, I don't know what McCallowitz is doing either. Are you, are you I'm, I'm just here too, just here for the party. Okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah, Don, what are you what are you doing there? What's your Nothing. role? Nothing really. Nice. I brought the kids down, and we uh, of course are visiting with with T sheets and Fundera. I went to their office, shot some hoops. Ooh, that was nice. fun. And I uh, brought the girls down. They're at Jersey Boys right now. Cool. Oh, yeah. Jamming out to that. They're pretty pumped. That's and cool. um, then we go to Florida to a conference tomorrow. Wow. Exciting. Yay. That's and, uh, Kelsey, uh, I saw your picture. You were uh, on a boat or a rowboat. No, we were just... <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? No, just went out and we were at accounting today. And so we walked out and took some pictures by the Statue of Liberty. And it was a good day. Yeah, it looked really nice there. Um, temperature looked good. <laughs> That's exciting. So I saw Matt to a picture of him uh, all uh, dressed up with T-sheet socks on uh, oh, yeah. for some interview. What was that all about? He did a video interview at Accounting Today. So it should oh. be posted on their site later this month. Nice. So check that out, accountingtoday.com. Yeah. The Riz, Matt Rissell, T-sheet CEO, co-founder and founder. Matt Rissell. Matt uh, Rissell. Yeah. Should Rizzle. be a really cool interview. Check it out. County we call him the Riz. I mean, I don't know what anybody else calls him, but yeah. we call him the Riz. He's the Riz. And nobody beats him. Um, so, and what about Mike? Kelsey, what's, what's, you're a uh, Seinfeld fan, right? I'm what? You're, are you a Seinfeld fan, or is that K-Beast? That must be K-Beast. Ah, oh, dang it. I what? have to tell her I'm the Riz and nobody beats me. So <laughs> I have to email that to her right now. Well, do you guys want to answer some questions? We have some questions that we want to yeah, talk about. All right. So, um, you know, hey, have make Todd have a seat because he's like lurking. He looks really. <laughs> awesome. Tell him to take a seat and just relax. He looks really <laughs> awkward and uncomfortable. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm here for him. He looks really oh, he's like fine. he's not sure where he's supposed to go or what he's supposed to do. <laughs> oh. There you go, buddy. Just chill out. Just relax. Um, okay, so what do you wanted to talk about? Um, company copying the company files, right? Yeah, I think we we did that last week. No, um, okay. I actually wanted to ask uh, since we have Mr. McCallowitz on, what he's up to lately? Anything he wants to share, and then we can oh, oh, yeah, yeah, more oh, yeah, so related back. questions. So we're, we're back. Okay. Yeah, so, Mike, uh, good to see you again. So what, what's uh, new in your world, and, and what are you doing in New York? Uh, well, I'm out here. I was invited by Kelsey and T-Sheets to hang out, so just here getting acquainted with some new folks okay. and partying with uh, Ms. Brolin. Um, not too much in, you know, in the works, except we started a group called Profit First Professionals. So I wrote a new book called Profit First, and we now have 72 or 73 accountants who have joined us to kind of kind of, but to leverage profit first and start helping businesses drive profitability. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and so, so we're trying, I'm trying to learn more about the community here, and, and I'm the new kid on the block, uh, meeting a lot of people, uh, <laughs> taking photographs, <laughs> clearly. 
We have the paparazzi here. Um, so what is the Project First program? What, uh, how does that work? Yeah, so here's my belief. I have no experience in accounting or bookkeeping except as a customer. And I realized that my accountant, when it came to year end, that's when he was doing his services. That's when he was charging me. I wouldn't talk to him literally for the rest of the year unless a weird anomaly came up. So uh, I thought, wow, accountants really have an opportunity to provide more service, not just do taxes and, and book, bookkeeping and reconciliations and stuff like that, but to do some kind of ongoing consulting. And they're so intimate with the business already, why not do some coaching? Uh, so Profit First, the idea of it is to turn traditional transactional accounting to more of an advisory type thing or consultative. Okay. Where can work with their uh, clients, bookkeepers too, every month and helping drive profit in their business. So I developed this program called Profit First Professionals which helps accountants and bookkeepers work with their clients and drive profitability in their clients. Nice. The benefit to the accountant bookkeepers are working with them on a monthly basis now, not just year end. Nice, and awesome. I love the idea of Profit First because your idea is you you should pay yourself first. You should. It's kind of like different. Do you want to talk about the whole theory? I mean, you might as well talk about that for somebody who doesn't know what the the just the you just high level over you know view of what profit the theory of what profit first is. Yeah, so it, it's based upon a behavioral principle. There's a behavioral principle called Parkinson's theory. And Parkinson's theory states this, that the more availability of something, the more it's human nature for our demand to increase to meet that availability. The, the class example that Ron, my partner, and I use, and uh, he's my business partner, not in the other way. Not that there's anything <laughs> wrong with that. I'm just, I'm just saying, my, uh, my partner Ron and I, um, used regularly is the concept of a tube of toothpaste. And when you have like a brand new tube of toothpaste, we have the propensity to use like a long bead of toothpaste. If you pour water on the toothbrush to get it wet, and the toothpaste falls in the sink, they're like, see ya. But when there's the toothpaste tube is nearly empty, our behavior changes. Now it's like, oh my gosh, we'll do anything to squeeze a little more out. We'll use it smaller amounts. If it falls in the sink, we're diving in, scooping it back out. So. You are. Sorry, I made a noise. So <laughs> the, the, that's, that's Parkinson's theory. And basically, our behavior changes to meet the supply. Well, it's true with business owners, too. The more money we see in our bank account, the more we behaviorally will start to spend. So as we make more sales, we automatically spend more. And it feels normal, just like a tube of toothpaste. It's like, this is what's available to me. The problem is most entrepreneurs grow, grow, grow and their expenses grow at the same rate. They try to sell more and grow, and they think that profitability will come one day, and it never comes because expenses grow at the same rate. It's called Parkinson's mm -hmm. Law. Nice. The, concept, the concept of profit first is take a predetermined percentage, mm -hmm. 10, 20, 30 percent of the money that comes into your business, immediately take a percentage and store it away into a separate account, out of sight, out of mind. Now run your business off the remainder. And basically we're flipping the traditional formula of sales minus expenses equals profit, we're flipping it to say sales minus profit, profit first, result. Oops. Love it. I think we're supposed to do it individually with our savings, so I, I like that you're rolling yeah, yeah, the, the business paradigm. Yeah. It's pay yourself first, apply it to business. That's awesome. Well, cool. Well, um, you know, it's good to see you. It's been a while. I'm glad you're up there and uh, making the rounds. It's exciting. Don, you're having yep. fun too, and, and I see Kelsey and Todd there as well. Uh, I have a question for Todd. Are you guys drinking the CPA IPA beer at all, or is it just kind of Miller Lite? Oh, yeah. We are. We brought it to New York. It's, uh, you know, Woody, it's National Beer Day. Yeah. Hashtag right. National Beer Day, CPA IPAs. Oh, oh so I, I talked to awesome. you. Speaking of the CPA IPA, here's what I want, and I asked the, uh, the CORECOM team if they could make this happen. Uh, a couple weeks ago in Kathy Iconis' tweet chat, her QBO tweet chat, um, the QBO chat, hashtag QBO chat, Somebody mentioned uh, having a bowl of QBOs for breakfast, <laughs> and I, like I that. want to make that happen. I need to eat those for breakfast every morning at Scaling New Heights, and I think we should have uh, a big community breakfast, and they should serve QBOs, uh, you know, or maybe Honey Nut QBOs. I don't know. The possibilities are absolutely endless. Awesome. And so, because I'm not a beer drinker, 
I but I am a cereal lover. I mean, I love cereal. If I could just live on cereal, I would be perfectly happy. So I want uh, the QBOs. Nice. I want that to happen. Spaghetti BOs or spaghetti QBOs? <laughs> spaghetti QBOs. <laughs> I'd work too. I don't know. All I know is I want cool. some honey nut QBOs uh, in my bowl. And then yeah. in my belly. I want them to get in my belly. In my belly. Yeah. yeah. That's what I want to happen. So, well, that's cool. It seems like you guys are having a lot of fun, and, and New York City's great. I'm going to be there at the end of April, actually, for the New York Accounting Technology Show. So looking forward to that. It's always a fun one there in Pennsylvania Hotel, right across from Penn Station. Good stuff. Uh, I think Todd will be at that one, too. I'll be there. Awesome. Well, I'll be there. Yeah. Just I get to start my uh, booth jockey uh, season. You're working the booth. There. Booth there jockey, yeah. That's the LA one. No, I'm I'm skipping that. Uh, I'm doing <gasps> New York AICPA Scaling New Heights Leader and QB Connect. Oh, you're not going to be in LA. No, Emily. Emily and I split them up this year. Uh, oh well, Emily will be there because I'll be in LA. Oh, yeah. She'll I'll be, be in great. LA, so I'm. She'll be there, and you have a lot of people. I'm sure Kim will be there, right? Maddie yeah, probably. Well, but I mean, I always, I always, you know, that's one of the my favorite places to go uh, yeah. work the booth with you because that's one of the great. <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna say it. Cause I don't want to make anybody mad. <laughs> like I love that one because it's such a like the same core people at that it's event relaxed. every year, and they're so chill, and they're just you know like, hey, it's you. And then they always have like such like that one more than any other one. They have such very specific questions and things that yeah. they want to ask you. So um, I just I don't know. I was just looking forward to it, but I well, guess I, I prefer I, go I to prefer going to the uh, going to the conferences where I get yelled at because that's exciting for me. I, <laughs> I get really bored when I'm just kind of talking civilly to people in a group. So um, when I'm actually being accosted or it's a volatile environment, it's really fun for me. So. New York's really good for that. I'm really sad to be missing Jersey, of course, and of course, Scaling New Heights. No, I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> I wish probably get some questions. That yeah. That's pretty funny, but in, in a small way. Um, okay, yes. Did we not do the. Oh, is there anything else, Don, Kelsey, Todd? You guys, Mike, you want to add anything else before we run into questions? No, go for it. Okay. Actually, Don, Don, there's a good one for you on here, and you're the only one that can answer it, and it's real easy. It's you're just Stacy wanted to ask you if you could okay. share, if you're up for that, an overview of the amazing systems that you have in place that have made your tax season way better than historically for you. Yeah, so I remember we were going to talk about that last week. Stacy and I were were kind of texting back and forth. Um, yeah, so we really have a great system for onboarding, which I think is probably one of the biggest challenges for in tax season is, you know, either an existing client or a new client calls and they want to get their tax return done, and really there are certain things that you need no matter who they are or what what's happening. So you always need a copy of the prior return. You always need dates of birth of everybody because if they give you a copy of the prior return, the social security numbers are on there, but the birth dates are not. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different things that we need before we can really even start any kind of a process. And so this year with hiring Nicole, of course, and having Kevin uh, Gervais in the office, and we've been able to systematize. We use QuickBase. Other people use other uh, CRM systems to track their clients and all the stuff that they're doing. And so we've just chosen QuickBase. And it's allowed us to, okay, new client call comes in. Nicole adds them as a new client. She knows the things we need initially before I even look at it. Before I'll even look at their prior year return, she embarks in the smart, invites them to Smart Vault. They log in to Smart Vault, upload their documents. If they don't know how, she handles that. I don't have to touch it. And then the process is just getting started. And so, um, with the, with doing that, obviously, it makes the process so much easier for me. I'm touching things one time. I don't want unless I know 95% that we're pretty sure we have everything. Am I? Are you texting Woody? Because I can tell. No. no. I'm, <laughs> yeah, like it. I'm texting Kelsey. She's right behind Stacey's you. Stacy's texting behind I'm you. Texting Somebody was getting busted because Stacy has that Stacy look on her face. Look at the phone now in her hand. I totally know her. 
<laughs> I was texting Kelsey. Yeah, this is boring. Yeah. Oh, this is boring. Can she hurry up? Can you nudge no, her? No, that wasn't. I was listening, but I was texting Kelsey. Anyway. Yeah. I, I don't. Keep talking. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, because of that, the other piece of it is once we're done, we have a really great system for are they getting a hard copy of the return, which there are still people who want the printed copy and whatever, so they can lose it, right. I suppose. Yeah. Um, but we always, you know, so we have those systems in place to say, okay, the return's been final reviewed. Now it's time for Nicole to process it. How is she processing it? Is it going to be a hard copy and a smart fault, or is it going to be just a hard copy or whatever Whatever that happens with the client? I don't need to have a conversation with her about it. We mark it right in the CRM. The email goes right to, to Nicole. She does the processing. Done. And so I don't actually ever do that. So last year, in 2000, or tax year 2013, we did about 107 returns, 108 returns, which for one person, it was just me, I had no help. And then this year, we're up at about 174. And we, wow. we were able to complete all the returns where people were like, I better get my return, uh, even though I handed you my stuff this morning, um, <laughs> and, which is, you know, always awesome. We love them. We love them. No, you kind of don't love them. I don't like you love them, but you don't love it when they do that. I don't like that. You love their money. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I don't like no. that. <laughs> but, um, so you're but totally it, paperless, though. Which I just nice. laughed like Betty Rubble. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, the systems are, are just, they work. We've, we've got it figured out. I mean, we're three, three relatively new relationships to put together. Um, for what is ex an extremely short season, um, as we really don't even have forms ready and ready to go the first week of February. So it's been really awesome. I mean, everybody is on extension, or they've been filed, or they're in process, and you know you can put people on extension before the return's done, and if you finish it, you know, party. You so, know, did you say everyone's filed, in process, or in extension? That's right. So everyone's either started, incomplete, and not started. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> so everyone's I like everywhere. This, yeah, it's, I love it's, it. it's all good. Oh, that's all I'm yeah. for you. Yeah, we do. We <laughs> yeah, just we got everywhere. it going on. They're all over the place. They're all over the People place. People are wherever they Nothing's are. Nothing's better, of course. Yeah. So it's been great, though. And, you know, she takes care of all the, all the other malarkey. People have questions. I, you know, how, I don't know what I'm supposed to send in. What's a voucher? You yeah. know, I don't have to answer those questions anymore. So it's been really well, awesome. Thanks for sharing. That was awesome. We had that on the, the doc for last week, but um, thanks. You know. And I wanted to make sure that we got it in before the you know before the end of the tax season because there's a couple of people who are on the Twitter who are like, oh hey, I need to know this. I'm very interested in that. So it's fun. Thanks for asking. Thank you, Don W. Brolin. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. So um, I did want to mention that I, I found out actually through uh, one of Todd's colleagues, Jim Clement, who also works with the you know, strategic account team and travels a lot with the large firms. But I guess you know we've been working, or I should say the development team that is over uh, Beanstalk, which is really just converting from desktop to QBO in, in a much better, fashionable way. We now support converting memorized transactions, which is very exciting. Uh, I get that asked Wait, a lot. Stop. Back that okay. up. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, when you convert from a desktop file to QBO, memorized transactions now come over. That you can't just be like, mm, yeah, memorized transactions come over and that's all good. Like that's a BFD right there. Like that's yeah. huge. Yeah, it's huge. If I have clients who are per who are absolutely perfect for QBO. They're completely service based. Alarm. They do alarm monitoring, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So they're all over memorized transactions. They're perfect for that, and but they can't move. They don't even want to start a new QuickBooks file. They, I converted them from Pro 2000, no, from Pro 99 to Enterprise 2011 or 2012 a few years ago, and they refused to start a brand new file because they had so many memorized transactions that yeah. they didn't want to re-enter. So if those come in. Now, like that's a huge, huge, big deal. Um, no, just the eyeballs. We're touching eyeballs. Yeah, like that's a big deal, and it includes yeah. so invoices. So any memorized transactions, whether they're invoices or sales receipts or journal entries, anything, all of the all of the memorized transactions. They now, they now convert, and and as a quiz. Oh my gosh. What is the QBO skew? the QBO version that memorized transactions would not convert to. 
of the three? Simple start. Right, because it doesn't well, have recurring templates. Convert. Yeah, because you can't. Well, that you it doesn't can't have recurring convert. templates. Well, All that right. and you can't convert a QuickBooks desktop file to Simple Start. I thought you couldn't do that. Well, I thought they opened that up a little while ago. Oh well. But um, memorized transactions are recurring. I don't know nothing about them. Recurring transactions are in essentials and plus, and they now convert from desktop, which you know, it. I'm just not really thrilled tonight, but yes, it's very exciting. Stacy, thank you for, for uh, you know, that ramping that up and, and turning amazing. it up a notch. Very I exciting. I could drop an F-bomb no. and all <laughs> I can say is BFD because it's that big of a deal. Like, that right. changes, that changes a whole bunch of shit for a whole bunch of people. I'm just going to say that go. right now. Yeah. Changes a bunch of shit. All right. So, and also, and this would be for Don's uh, colleague who does a lot with QBO and particularly payroll, the online yeah. payroll. Yeah. We're starting to convert year-to-date payroll history too. Not all of it, uh, but some of it. I think right now the year-to-date paychecks come over. Uh, that's pretty exciting too. So, you know, you'll see more in the next month or two on the payroll. We're going to try to just bring all the year-to-date over, right? Tax payments, checks, things like that. But I was very excited about memorized transactions, and I'm assuming we'll open up memorized reports soon as well. So I, I forget where he found this link. It was uh, a story, a cute little story of Jack and the Beanstalk, and the development team tied it into you know, what they're trying to do, converting from desktop to QBO. And yeah. so I don't know on the QBO blog or, or wherever you'll find it, but just wanted to, to mention that. That's kind of a big deal, I'm just going to say. So, Stacy, you had a revelation. I did. So, <laughs> this is it. I so I've had I have what's called legacy free uh, QBO account. And nice. uh, it means it's really really old. It means I've had it for 11 years. And so my QBO file is uh, so old. It was before How old is it, Stacy? Um no, it uh, yeah. It's so old, it's before they had the different subscription levels, so you would just sign up for QBO, and then you would add different packages, like the business package, and the payroll package, and all this other stuff. And um, it's been acting a little bit odd, uh, and I just really don't, I don't freak out about it. And so I've been using the global search. So you know, up in the, um, the bar at the top, the menu bar, you can search for whatever you yes. need to search for, right? That's called the yes. global search. And so I would type in like 300 dot that, looking for like a transaction for $300, and it wouldn't show me anything. And so I would say, well, that's weird. <laughs> I guess my QBO is broken. And so then I would just go to the advanced, and I would search for 300. You know, I would do the filter and search for transactions that equal blah, 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 300. Well, I found out it's not that my, <laughs> it's not that my QBO is broken. Um, it's because you have to type in the dollar sign, and I never knew that. So I want to do a really quick. <laughs> yeah, show me. I, yeah, I wasn't and sure the what reason I found this out is because I was doing um, the something with the QBO dev team yesterday. I was doing a WebEx with them, and they were showing me, and I got to be the first person outside of Intuit to see what the new check registers are potentially going to look like. I got to see the beta pages for those, uh, and I'm really excited, and I can't say anything about it, but as we were doing that, I was typing something in, and Jennifer Martin said, no, no, you have to type the dollar sign, and I said, the dollar sign? She goes, yeah, it's just like... that anymore, I know. She said, it's just like the global search, and I said, you have to do that in the global <laughs> search? Like, I didn't even know, so I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a screen share... And I have to find out where I have. I thought I had QBO open, but maybe I, maybe I don't. So hold on one second. Um, let me open up a QBO account. That is funny. I was thinking if we could somehow one day like flash banners across someone who's talking. Then when you were talking about that, I could put like top twenty woman in accounting last two years. As you were saying, I'd put a dollar sign in. Yeah. So <laughs> right. That just would have been funny. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so hold on. Uh, I'm logging into. I am. There we you go. You in? Okay. 
All right, so can you guys see this? Black, yes, I'm in there. Okay. So the global search is this. I have found out what last time that this is the candy bar. So when you search on this and you just search for 300, it doesn't, and it doesn't come up with any transaction. Oh, there, it worked. Yeah. So I was told yesterday that you're supposed to type in the dollar sign here to pull up those transactions. I don't so, remember that. Yeah, they told me yesterday that you're supposed to. So I didn't know that. So if you are, if you happen to be typing something in here and you don't type in the dollar sign and it doesn't turn up any transactions and you uh, know you have multiple transactions wait. that are that amount, um, yep. add the dollar sign. I know that in my own QBO, this is the case. I have to type in the dollar sign for that to show up. So this is what we're talking about with global okay. search. Is that right there? That's one way. Let me share something because I don't have all the candy bar when you go into QBOA. I don't know if you noticed this. You probably have. Okay, but, so um, I'll stop and you then stop. you go share. Because um, maybe this is what she meant. When I'm in, notice how I'm in a file but I'm in through QBA. Well, quick oh, account. Okay, yeah. No, I mean, notice I just have a plus sign. I have a plus sign. <laughs> And then the search is here. So I'm wondering if I need to do, like, if I do 300, if it'll find anything. No. Oh, if by know. number, I mean, not really. So maybe she meant here, maybe? Yeah, but I mean, I was on a regular QBO page like this. I wasn't logged in through QBOA. And she said, oh, yeah. And so maybe this, it is. You're right. But when I was you're right. Doing in here, the new search, you got to put the dollar sign, I think. Okay. Well, it's back. Yeah. How about we just say this? It's best practice mm -hmm. to put the dollar sign in if you're doing. That's the safe because then everybody would be happy, right? And then that you can say, happy. you can tell the people that, that they aren't getting the correct search results. Well, you got to put in the dollar sign, right? And they'd be like, yeah, but I haven't used the dollar sign since I, you know, sold my abacus on eBay. And I'm like, well, sorry, you just have to use the dollar sign because we're not going to know, right? You know, you're going to search <laughs> the number, and it could be, you know, a, a number to a transaction or something or an account number. So and I think somebody... they would agree. Somebody on Twitter, and I don't know who the Twitter handle is, um, said that they fixed it just to trip me up <laughs> when I was on the show <laughs> awesome. today. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so I also, very quickly, the company templates, they are still there. Uh, we did this last week, so I don't really want to go too, yeah. too far, but you have to be in as an accountant. You won't see it normally. You'll see the option for, um, when you go to QuickBooks Labs, you'll see the option to turn on the company file templates, right? And this just allows you to apply a template that you have from another company. Like Stacy was telling the example last week, she has several, tip, I forget what kind of business it was, but she's creating like seven new QBO files, so she just, she'll be able to apply the template from one to, to seven, uh, which should save her time. It's just chart of accounts, your items, and company settings, but still, you know, I'm sure we'll add more. I'm hoping like memorized reports, right? I, I already pushed that one back. I thought that would be cool. And right. form templates, you know, uh, that you've already customized. So those two things would be sweet as well. And I think those would be the top five people would want, and I'm sure we'd add other things. So though you can turn it on, you won't really be able to use it unless you're in through <clears throat> QBOA. And then when I go to company templates, it opens up the list. And, you know, I sh as I showed last week, you have all these public templates that I can apply. So you would create, the workflow in my mind would be, obviously I'm already in a file that has a template. So I could, I could copy this one and add it to the list and make it public. See, Laura Redmond has done several, and Megan Bronson. And see, I'm recognizing some names here. Deborah Deffer, right? She has a cool restaurant template. That's sweet. So what I would do is, in QBOA, I'd, I'd add a new client, you know, wholesale or whatever. And then I go into the company file, just like I am in this QBO file, and I would go to the gear icon, QB Labs, turn on templates, go to the gear icon, company templates, and then I it was a restaurant, I would just click on the restaurant template, and then there would be an apply button, right, on the lower right, and then I could go ahead and apply that. And I would see these list elements in these three lists. And, it, you know, it's going to save you some time, right? It's two main lists you don't have to import. Obviously, you're not going to do this if you're <laughs> converting from desktop. This would be, I'm not converting from desktop scenario, right? So. Right. So but that's I, uh, that. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. 
No, I, I just wanted to say um, Valerie said that you can, it works both ways, but if you want to uh, have the dollar sign show up in the, it's technically required to only show the uh, money column results, like the dollar column results. So um, I guess if you typed in just 300, then that would show kind of everything. Maybe if you had it in the name, if you had it um, just All anywhere. Right. So that's very nice. Yeah, we got to have Valerie on, actually. The wealth of knowledge with QBO. That'd be fun. Maybe she can pick some topics and just come on and just talk for a while. That's Ariel. Yes. I know it is Ariel. John, okay. Ariel. I have a picture of her combing her hair with a fork. I mean, she is Ariel. <laughs> you, you, um, uh. you made her sing. Didn't you make her sing, too? Yeah. 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 No, a scarf, just so we could get her address. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so template's done. Uh, oh, if you have other questions, you can email us at, the, at our email address, which unfortunately I don't know. Hey, I have a question uh, for Dawn. I have a, it's show at yes. QBShow. Show, show at, at QBShow.com. QB yep. QB QB show. Cool. So Dawn, um, Troy Marseille from uh, Intuit emailed me a question from oh. someone. His name is Adam at TrashAmps. Com. And he had two questions. And the first one is, I want to assign the payment method of cash for all of the transactions, which are all sales receipts, in an account, one of his uh, income accounts called product sales. Mm -hmm. uh, he is wondering, aside from going one by one to assign the payment method to each transaction, and it doesn't matter, I think, because um, he also has Pro, QB Pro 2013, is there a way to do that in bulk? Because I know that there's no way to do that in QBO, and I, I don't think there is in desktop. But I just wondered if you knew of a way to what do about that. about the preferred payment method in the customer record? So he wants to apply all of the transactions that have already happened that are posting to a one specific uh, income account. He wants to post Our the payment cash. method to cash. Question. He wants to bulk in batch. Update. Yeah. I'm thinking transaction pro exporter and importer. I don't know if you can do an update just to the payment method though. Because you know what I thought about that, but I don't know if you can either. And I know Karen is on a cruise, so I couldn't. Well, she needs to knock that off. I know, right? Like, quit relaxing, Karen. Karen. Hello. Wouldn't that be, yeah, wouldn't that be uh, quite a, a gamble to do something that invasive just to update payment method? And that's I mean, what can't I you just draw a line in the sand yeah. and just say, all right, from now on, I'll set the default. Yeah. Uh, and then just, you know, the ship has sailed and just yeah. kind of let it go. And then, you know, from now on, you, you'll be happy. Yeah. yeah. That would be my best Thank practice there, sure. That, and that's what I thought, too. I just knew that there wasn't any way you could do it without using, you know, like Transaction Pro Importer or something. I feel, I feel like you can't do that with transactions like you can with customers, where you bring in the customer again, advanced import, you could even do it, but not on transactions, I don't think. Well. Right. And he wants to do it on transactions, so right. I just you're. Oh, I mean, I, yeah. Great question. So, though. so the nice thing is he can set a preferred payment method on the customer going forward, but I yeah. don't believe it's retroactive to the transactions he already created. Sorry, I forgot the R in that. There's actually uh, two R's in that. I only said one. Retroactive, but that's fine. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But you can do like the preferred payment method field. Um, you know, I just don't. I think it's. Just going forward, um, yeah. but it would be cool well, to I test it. You know, I'm going to try it. right now. Just see, cash. He wants a cash, eh? Yeah, he wants a cash. You no, know I would just want to make a note. I'm proud of him for reporting it. Just throwing it out there. Cash okay. sales. Okay. Okay. It, it doesn't work on existing transactions. I love that. Just just throwing it out no. there. No, he's not throwing it under his mattress. I'm proud of him for wanting to report right? sales. That's my point. I know. But it does come up on new I love ones. It. I was like, who wants to report cash? Oh I have to I wish it was retroactive. That would be sweet. Did you have a second question, though, Stacey? I thought you said he had sent over two. Yeah, he had another question, and this is uh, kind of unre it's unrelated, and it's uh, QBO specific, where he wants to, is there an easy way in QBO to create a report for a customer in my customer list, kind of a report button like I see an account in the chart of accounts, uh, to see all the transactions in a given time frame with that customer, 
as well as a total purchase by that customer in the time frame. And there's not technically a way to do that so um, without creating a customized report. Um, you know, you can go do a, a sales by customer summary or a sales by customer detail, and then you'd have to filter it by that specific customer and then memorize it for each customer, which is kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. Um, well, there's a cap. Yeah. Uh, so, so you guys all have drinks, so drink up. All right. Question though, yeah. on your on your on your answer, because I think that you're on to something. I don't, there's obviously not no button to create that report. No. But if you want income and expenses, so I guess maybe it's a. I'm. Did you say income and expenses for that same customer? No, he just wants to see all the transactions in a given time frame with that customer, and there is a way to do it in QBO. Yeah, um, so you got to memorize the report probably, right? Or customize it. Well, I'm gonna show you. Cool. Share it out. Yeah. So this, um, if you go to the customer list, you know, the customer center over on your left nav bar, and you click on the customer name, uh, you have two options over here, and one of them you can export this to Excel. So you can export it to Excel, and then you can get a total, which is what he wants. Uh, and he can filter or delete any line items that he needs to. Or if he wants, he can just, uh, you know, he first he can do, you know, like batch actions, and he can frit, you know, he can filter it by whatever date, you know, range is available here. Uh, not, you know, he can't do any custom dates uh, here. But then once he filters it, he can um, click the print button, and then he can get this and save it as a PDF or print it out to a hard copy if he needs to. So those are kind of the I think the easiest ways to do what he was doing without having to go in and create a custom report um, is just to do that. And so that's what I told him, and I, I still nice. I don't think that he was... I don't think that still that, that really solved his problem, but I think it was getting closer. So. Well, why wouldn't he want to run a report? Well, I think he was just looking for something that was specific, like on this page, where he could just click report. Right, so you know how if you go over to uh, like your chart of accounts, and you know you have, um, you know you can say view report, run report. He was looking at something like this. So if you're in the chart of accounts, you can drop that down and choose run report. He wanted that over here in the customers, but there's not, there isn't that. You know you could do a statement. Um, but the only thing that is close to that run report from the drop down are one of these. So that's all. That's all I have to say about that. That's cool. I think you can export it to Excel too if you want. Yeah, to, you can. That's I mean, you not what he wanted to, Excel, to do. Or you can filter it and save it to PDF. But what he wanted was that drop down, like on the chart of accounts that says run report, and it just yeah. doesn't exist. But there are those other two options aside from going to the reports and then customizing other things you want. There's a cat. So you know, I would like. Um, you know how a lot of the lists have a setting um, to make it compact. You know, and it just kind of, I don't know, makes everything more spreadsheet vis view. You know what I mean? Yeah. On some some of these lists, you can click the gear icon and, ch and check the compact box. I think the uh, the bank credit card window does it. Customers. Yeah. Um, you know. I would I like, like that to be the default uh, view of a list. That it's compact. Yeah, I would too. And not not bulbous. You know, it's not a smart car. You know what I mean? It's so not. Nice it's definitely kind of not a smart. <laughs> streamlined, right? <laughs> I want it to be more. I think it's more like a sleek muscle car. That's how I prefer it to be. Oh, QBO, um, you prefer it to be a, a sweet muscle car? On the sleek, deck. What the sleek, heck? Yeah, sleek, sleek muscle car would be nice. That's what I'm going for. All right, now back at it. So this is fun, though. I, I, I've enjoyed this. Um, there he is. There's a kitty kitty. Okay. So I was gonna I was gonna bring Abby on the camera, but she's totally running around naked. I guess she ran out of the room and got away from mom, so she's running around. Uh, totally naked. <laughs> oh, oh, she's funny, man. Awesome. She is funny. Um, so, uh, all right. Oh, Stacy, price levels in QBO. 
Hmm. Can't do it. That's the bottom line is it can't be done. Uh, so if you absolutely positively have to have it, there's a, kind of a, a, a workaround. I'm using air quotes because somebody online the other day was calling one of my other workarounds a workaround as if it wasn't really a workaround. <laughs> that's, that's tough. Right? Yeah. That's a little, that's a little that was, backhand, backhand that, compliment. Yeah. Oh, no, it wasn't a backhanded compliment. It was also referred to on the same thread as awkward and cumbersome, too. So, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, pretty classy. It was pretty classy. I thought it was pretty nice. Um, but anyway, moving on, I have another workaround. And, uh, again, <laughs> with all workarounds, you have to preface that by saying... Um, they're not for everybody, right? So you have to, it has to be not too complicated. The person has to have the time to be able to kind of do it. Some of them take a little bit longer than if you could just do something in the product. So one of the ways that you can do it, uh, and it really only works if you're not using inventory uh, with QBO, is to do sub items. So you'd have you know, your parent item, and you wouldn't use that item, right? So you'd have widget, and then you'd have the sub items and each one of the sub items would be like widget 20, widget 30, widget 40, and have the price levels associated yeah. with each one of the sub items. Uh, so, and again, like I said, it's not the ideal situation, but I think for a service based industry or maybe uh, somebody who is not carrying any inventory, maybe they do, you know, they sell non inventory items, I think it's a fine solution. Yeah, but people do that in, in desktop for a long time to show different SKUs of a particular parent item. I don't see yeah. why it's such a stretch to apply a similar either, method for price I'm, levels. I don't either, but I just <laughs> want to say I mean, not every workaround works for every uh, client, no matter how awkward and or cumbersome uh, that workaround may or may not be. Anyway. Um, the other option is to get an inventory app. Even if you aren't using the inventory, you, you don't actually need to track any inventory. You can use the inventory, yeah. you know, like SOS inventory That's to awesome. assign price levels for that one particular SOS item. SOS is awesome. I know, I love it. Love and it, you can use it for so much other stuff. So you could use it for, you know, if you needed to do sales orders, um, you know, another workaround in QBO. Uh, again, this one is not awkward or cumbersome. Uh, but you can, if you want to use, um, you can create an extra template with an estimate. So you can create a second estimate template and call it a sales order in QBO. Um, it doesn't actually hold anything, you know, out of inventory or keep you from being able to sell it. I love, and just make, and this is your point, you're like, don't turn uh, inventory on in QBO if you're going to use SOS. That was a right, good learning yeah, for me. Right, yeah, that's another thing too. So, um, yeah. But, I mean, you can use SOS for, like, sales orders, yeah. for work orders, uh, group you know, items. for group items, for any of those kind yeah. of things, uh, if you don't want to do a workaround in QBO. So I like those, SOS. I love SOS. It's a great well, you app. You know well. I've only done a cursory... Do you uh, remember when it used to be OE Companion? Last week. Yes. Do you OE remember Companion. that? It was so yeah. cute. That was, like... Yeah. Mm, it's like the first really, SOS yeah. was the first really, mm -hmm. really good QBO add-on. Right. Um, so i got to share out something just okay. to help, um, to kind of confirm that your workaround is not cu a cumbersome. Okay, I'm going to do a price level. I have like this tax prep item here. And I'm going to create a new item. And say the tax prep, you know, is... A thousand bucks, but the price level is like friends and family, right? Ten forty, friends and family. Yep. It's going to be like eight hundred. Okay. Now watch how difficult this is. Are you ready? Oh. I know. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Oh. So you see how hard that was? I had to like click the mouse to check the box, and then I have. Oh gosh, shoulder. And then you just kind of click on the item, the parent item. And now I have a price level, you know. Um, it goes right under the 1040 tax prep. Yep. It'll just be, you know, a sub item like that, and that's like a price level. And that was real difficult to do, you know, let me tell you. Um, so 
just wanted to confirm that that it is it, quite you know possible. What, though, to do some that. people may consider that to be awkward or cumbersome. I'm just awkward. saying. All right. I don't. I thought it was quite simple, but that's just me. Awesome. Yep. Um, all right. Let's see here. Um, Kath, okay, you got that one. Another client has revenues on their QuickBooks billing software and expenses on our version of QuickBooks. So they, uh, so I guess the first one is QuickBooks. So they have two companies. I wasn't sure if it's two comp. Okay, so it's two company files. Thank you. So they have a QB file that does revenues and expenses. It must be in the accountant's backup they had or something. Uh, I'm. First off, I'm not sure why someone would have revenues in one QB file and expenses in another. Uh, right. And, I, and I'm not sure why you would do that. Um, I don't know. And they want to combine the two QB files kind of, you know, so what's the best way? You know, if it's desktop, uh, Carl Irvin has a great data transfer utility. You choose the one file, I'm assuming it would be the our version of it that has the expenses, and then you can just import the revenue expenses from the other QuickBooks file. And that's like 150, 200 bucks and it's a pretty easy utility to leverage. I don't think there's a way really outside of Transaction Pro Importer to bring them up again as Don did before in the QBO world if they have two QBO files. That's what I would suggest. But I just think that if you're doing revenue in one QB file and expenses in another, then you shouldn't be allowed to use QuickBooks. <laughs> oh, there's my answer to that one. <laughs> yeah. So that's again, it's why I'm not in charge of the company, or else you know, we'd be doing terribly. If you're using what? <laughs> if you're using yeah. QB. If you're using QuickBooks to have expenses and income in one and the other, then you're cut off. You're not allowed. No, that's... I love that. That made my night. I just want to say that. No, but um, no, but we're still happy to have you. You know, I'm just it's in jest. Happy to have you. <laughs> you know what? I want to say. Uh, Valerie says that she does not like fear, but she has a workaround. <laughs> <laughs> That's my awesome. workaround, my workaround is botanic <laughs> with extra lime. That's and I'm sure workaround. it's not a cumbersome or awkward workaround. No, either. you know what? It is slightly. We did one time. I think it was uh, Sleater in Vegas at the. We were out to dinner with like Bob Babcock and some other people from Unidata, and I asked the waiter. <laughs> I asked the waiter. For extra lime, and he put an entire lime. He like sliced a <laughs> lime, awesome. and he brought it and put an entire lime. So that was slightly awkward and a little <laughs> bit cumbersome. Uh, but I do like extra lime, and usually when I ask for extra lime, I do <laughs> this. So this is my sign language for extra lime. So um, anyway, uh, that's funny. Um, no, so. And we would Here's never. One, and so, Dawn, hey, those, hey, wait, Dawn, I have to preface this because yeah. there's somebody freaking out on the internet here. We're joking think, when we say you're not allowed to use QuickBooks. So that's yeah, a joke. So of course. So like that's on. an absolute joke. So I apologize if that didn't come across. Uh, but there's a cat. So. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. That was totally in jest. Okay, yeah, it's completely okay. joke. I understand. Um, you know, yeah, we want everybody to use QuickBooks. My theory is I want to become Supreme Global Empress, a one QuickBooks file at a, at a time, right? So, yeah, I don't care how weird you're using QuickBooks. Go ahead and use it. But uh, we were just joking. It was hashtag just joking is what we should yeah. start doing. No, that's good. That's good feedback. i got to be careful next time. Right? Um, so I do have a question for Don though. Is she ready, is she able to come back in? Do they want to chime in? Because there is a question on oh, the document yeah. for her. They right. even done some, they're sending me slow mo videos. They're doing. Did all you Don? Stuff. Did you uh, say you had something to talk about, or the group did, or do you want to answer this question I have? I just want to answer the question. We just wanted to be part of it and. Yes. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Okay. And, and thanks. For, thanks for uh, being on the call this time too. It's been fun. So, um, is there a report? <laughs> that was awesome, Woody. <laughs> I'm 
I'm trying. My my, I'm just you know, I, it's I'm just not uh, in a you know typical uh, bouncy you know Tigger Everybody day, if you will. Yeah, yeah. It's not a Tigger um, day. I'm not a, yeah. I'm just I'm I'm just uh, when I say exciting, you'll just have to believe that I really mean it. All right. Even though I don't sound like I mean it at all. Okay. It's gonna be one of those things. Because clearly I'm I'm upsetting people on the internet, you know, and and just you know. Not us, Woody. I wouldn't um, so, worry about it too much, buddy. I think you're okay. good. I think you're okay. Is there, is, awesome. there, is there a report, Don? And this is, you know, you, to me, you know reports really well and, and yeah. things. And so I, I typically save the harder report questions for you, although I think for you it's not very difficult. Is there a report to show profit and loss on a sale of assets, like a profit or loss on a sale of assets? I have assets on the balance sheet um, until they're sold and then enter the profit and loss. On the PNL report, you know, is there a report? Um, yes, well, so when you are building an asset, mm -hmm. you end up. They made me do it. Oh, they locked. They made me do it. They, they made us pretend that the screen froze. <laughs> Mike made me do oh, it. God. Okay. Oh, God. So, so here's what ends up happening. This is what I always recommend. If you're building an asset, let's use WIP. Let's use a building, right? Let's use a building. So you're building a building. And you're tagging all of the costs associated with that building to an asset account, and it's building, and you know, could potentially be 14 pages long. Who knows? So you're technically almost building a P&L in an asset on the balance sheet. And it's typically one line item, no sub items, because what if you have multiple projects and you right. end up with a balance sheet 16 oh, pages long? Crazy. Nobody's going to read that book. You know, <laughs> I heard yes. Yeah, right. So get it, the book. Anybody? Oh, yeah. I'm to a book promo. That was pretty smooth. But anyway, so I always tell people, you know, when, when I'm working with a client, is to book it all to the one asset. You can always drill in to get the detail, and then when the sale is made on the asset, then you're going to book that on the P&L. You're going to book the sale of the asset, the total cost typically. You're not obviously detailing that out as well. You're not reclassifying the transactions to a P&L account or any of that malarkey. You're just mm -hmm. doing a journal entry, but you can always go back to the balance sheet for the details. And so a P&L, the, the technically no, but there's a workaround, Stacy, for that. Oh, is it awkward or cumbersome? Because those are really the only ones that I'm interested in. Accounting workaround. OK. Is and it awkward? It's not for me. Is but it cumbersome? Maybe for the, maybe for the uneducated, potentially. Or, okay. or people don't listen to what I tell them to okay. do. Novices. Then there's that. Right. The novice. That's fair, Todd. That's fair. Thanks, so I want to give Todd the credit because he said that. Oh, Ron. Oh, so Ron did, actually. Oh, Ron's, Ron's not here. <laughs> so they tell me too late, Woody. <laughs> well, you guys, Don. You guys are awesome for letting us even play with you tonight. No, no, it's great. I, I think it always helps when you have a little more... Uh, color. You know, color and... and other people around hanging out, and it's good to see the, the CPA, IPA, you know, in action. It's not a myth. It, it was good action to create. You can see what it does. You can see what it does. Right. We did it. I have a present for you, but I can't tell you about it, okay? Right. We did actually create it. And I am excited. Uh, Stacy's sending me two T-shirts, so I'm very excited for the new green color. I, know, I think it's real snazzy. As well. Yeah. I'm Don, excited. I'm going to try to wear it next week. you wanted, she said all of them. Yes. <laughs> I have uh, one more. Go ahead, say. Oh no, I was gonna say, and also Meredith Wood from Fundera also said all of the shirts is when I when I asked her how many that she wanted, she said all the shirts. I want all of them. Oh yes, and the, the green color is great. I mean, if it had been a shade lighter, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it. But it's a nice solid green, you know, almost like the 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 QBO green. Kind of nice, but not really, right? It's still unique. So love it. Can't wait to wear it. Hopefully next week. And I'm um, looking forward to people wearing them at Scaling Your Heights, and then we can, uh, you know, find you, call you out, and then give you a uh, nice gift from a sponsor. I don't know how that'll work out. I think Stacy has that broken down. But I wanted to answer one question, and then make one comment. And uh, as we're coming to the end, can QuickBooks Online uh, closed periods be locked? I mean, so. Um, that's basically a closing date password or just a closing date. Yes, you can do it. You can't set like periods though. I mean, basically you set the date and then it's 
pretty much closed it, unless you have a password or you could just have a pop-up. It's it's pretty flexible. It's a lot like the desktop. It actually mirrors the desktop functionality. Actually, when you convert from desktop to QBO, if there's a closing date on the file, then um, it'll be in QBO. Yep. And it's interesting. I, I got a question a couple of days ago. If someone at a firm, an accountant emailed me and said, hey, I'm on QBOA. I'm on the client dashboard, and I see this closed 1231.12 in this column. And, and am I allowed to access the file? What does that mean? And I said, well, is there a closing date on the QBO file? And she said, no, not that I know of. And I was like, well, there was in desktop. And when you converted it, you know, that converts. The password doesn't, but the closing date, date does. And she was like, oh, all right, cool. So, and I was like, yes, you can definitely open the file. Nice. So um, there, it works just like in desktop, um, but you can't set, like, more than one period, right? It's just, like, you know, the date you set. And anything on that day and before, uh, you would, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So, I think that's a good uh, end to the show. That's a great end. That's a great end. And I did want to publicly, uh, you know, apologize to anybody I offended um, in my tongue-in-cheek manner. You probably don't know me well, and, and I need to know my audience better. Um, I was kidding. Of course, I uh, am the last person to not want someone using a QuickBooks product. Uh, so, but it's all I good. will say, I will joke, and I will have a totally straight face, and I agree that you will not know. If you don't know me, so I that's something I will uh, I will remember for next time. Good feedback, thanks as well. Uh, rock on with your two files, one income expense. I really don't have a dog in that fight. Um, so, good stuff. I, I would encourage you to combine the files though, because you can actually do both in one file. Just so you know. Okay, yep. enough on that. Yep. So, Stace, anything else? Uh, I just have one thing to say, and that's Buscadan Laser. Ruskin and Laser. Don uh, and Michael Kalowitz, Kelsey, Todd, thanks for coming on. Cheers. Cheers. We'll see you, you guys. You guys out there at a conference oh. or something. Yeah. Take care. Rock it. And don't forget the contest. Make sure QB Show Live, hashtag, or the other way around. Peace out. Throw away your thumb drives, no attachments Get the files anywhere when you're permitted access What's the matter? Brush it with the hassle Jump up in the cloud and join us in the castle Because we're high up in the cloud